Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode does not even need an introduction, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. It's the Krenzler 1322 Total Stop. Man, we've all seen these being used by different people over the years, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's very normal to say, man, is that thing worth the money? Man, I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing is insane, man. <laughs> I hooked it up, I've used it. I love it, man. This thing is awesome. It's quiet. Man, it's everything everybody says it is, and I'm, and I'm very happy with it. So if that's all you wanted out of this video, then you're pretty much done right here. But if you want to learn how to put this in, everything it took for me to get it done, and why and where I laid it out, then stick around. This is going to be a good one. All right, so let's talk about some of the commonly asked questions I get about installing pressure washer systems on the wall. They say, Jeremy, where's the best location to do this? In the garage. My opinion is I wanted mine next to the door. I wanted to be able to get outside with it very easily. I have a hundred foot of hose. I can access basically my entire driveway all the way around the house if I go both directions. Man, I get the most out of this 100 foot easily from this location. So that's important to me. I've seen different locations, people have done it and they all look really awesome, but it just matters where you plan on using it and how far does that 100 foot of hose gonna reach for you and is it gonna get everything you've done that you want done. Maybe you wanna pressure wash your fence and if you put it in the back of the garage, it just might not reach. So think about that first. Um, secondly, is the garage finished, meaning the drywall is completed, or is it a blank slate? No drywall, open studs. Man, if it is, you're in good shape because you have a blank slate to do whatever you want. Now, I did do a third install type um, at a guy's house where he had a brand spanking new house. He just didn't want to cut the drywall to bits. So I installed everything on a three quarter inch piece of plywood. We took it on site, screwed it to the studs. It came out unbelievable. Everybody seemed to like it. It looks really clean. I was shocked at how nice it was, and that's, that's a good option too. But for today's episode, let's just uh, assume that you either have blank drywall or you've cut your piece out and now you're ready to work. Some other limitations that you have to uh, factor in. We need to get water over here. Now, I ran three quarter inch PEX pipe down into my wall and you just have to be able to do that. There could be some spaces where you have maybe cinder block uh, wall and it's just, cost prohibitive or, or un, unreasonable to run water to that location, then you have to pivot and decide where's the best spot? How do we get water there? How do we get power? We have to have a circuit breaker box nearby or somewhere in the vicinity so that we can run power over here too. So location comes down to usability of the pressure washer would be nice and then being able to get uh, power and water to the location is important too. Those three things have to go first. Another common question I get, how high do I mount the, the shelf? I like my reel to be uh, about chest level where I can reel it in and out without hunching over and without having to reach up high. So I start out by walking up to the wall, I put my hand out in front of me and I think to myself, that's a comfortable position to reel the reel and I mark the studs and uh, take note of that measurement. Now from there, I like to lay everything out on the ground. I'll put the hose reel on the ground and I think to myself, how high above the hose reel do I want the shelf? Now, there's some utility and cosmetics to this. Now what we don't want is a gigantic gap in between here. That's just like, like a car wheel. I mean, it doesn't make sense to have huge gaps. And also, I don't want it so close that I'm rubbing either. I don't want to be busting my knuckles or, or chafing up my hose as I'm reeling it in and out. So I like to think about, you know, two or three inches between the shelf and the top of the reel seems to be a real nice looking fit and it's real comfortable. And people have asked like, man, it looks like it's a knuckle buster over there. And it's not. My my knuckles are fine. <laughs> so adjust accordingly to that. So now I got two measurements already, right? Height from the floor to the center to reel and then height from the center to reel to the, to the shelf. Now we got to get in and do some work inside the drywall. We want to do two by six blocking. I put it between the studs and I put it at the heights to where my reel is going to screw right into the stud. And also my shelf is going to fully screw right into the stud. You guys have to remember that, man, this Krenzel is 40 plus pounds. This is a hundred foot of hose full of water. This thing can get really heavy and it's made of metal. 
I'm not sure how much all this weighs, but man, you want some real good supports inside that wall to support all this stuff. Now we basically are gonna run our electrical and our water. I ran my three quarter inch water line down the here, and I ran my 20 amp dedicated circuit. That's important. We don't wanna run a 15 amp circuit over here, and some would say, oh, but these are 15 amp units. They are, until you hook a foam cannon up to it and start running it real hard, then could pop a breaker. So got to be careful with that. I would run a dedicated line straight to this, label pressure washer on it so that there's no confusion. Now that we got our power, we got our water, I want to talk about the heights of these also. Now I looked at mine and I thought I want to put the power high enough above so that it can service any pressure washer I buy in the future. It worked killer with the Karcher. It's working unbelievable with the Krenzel. It's just a nice little loop up to the, to the power socket. So in my case, it's about 10 inches to the bottom of the socket to the top of the shelf. Now on the water side, I, I was thinking the same exact thing. I don't want to put the water so it's a, a perfect fit for any one unit. What if I want to change units over the years? So I got to think about future proofing all this stuff. So when I ran the water, I decided to go up and these are just rough estimates, guys. I'm at 12 inches from top of shelf to bottom of hose bib and that worked well for me. Another thing I did with my unit was I ran a bucket fill. Now this is a great idea, man. I fill all my buckets from here. I don't have to go out and use any specific hose or anything. Now, when I decided on the height from the bucket fill, I just went, you know, height of a bucket plus the length of my hose with the, with the um, nozzle on the end, and then I put my fitting down here. Now, depending on how long you want your hose is where you're gonna put your fitting. So uh, just put it wherever it makes sense for the equipment that you have. If you are doing it just like mine, mine is 46 inches from the floor to the bottom of the hose bib, and that works good for me. And that puts, the, that puts the fireman's nozzle just a few inches above the bucket, which leaves room for a bucket dolly, and, or it even works great without a bucket dolly. The next thing we're gonna do is drywall, but I got a cool tip for you before you do that. I would always measure up to the blocking and I write the measurements down on the wood so that once this thing is closed, I know exactly where it is. Once I get some measurements all drawn out on the wood, then I'll come back and I'll take a picture of it. That way I can, re I can reference those measurements and I can have an idea exactly where all that stuff is so that I'm not just making Swiss cheese out of this drywall once I get it up. All right, so now the drywall's up. Everything's closed up. It looks amazing. <laughs> it looks amazing. Now it's time to start mounting some stuff. I'm gonna mount the hose reel. Now with my hose reel, I used three eighths by two and a half inch lag bolts. Now, the way you have to think about this, we're gonna go through the hose reel, which is about, you know, eighth inch thick. Then you're gonna go through five eighths drywall and then through inch and a half studs. Now we wanna penetrate all the way through all those, but I don't wanna go so deep that I'm sticking out of the siding and, you know, poking out of the side of the house or hitting something that I don't wanna hit back inside that wall. So just make sure that you're going the thickness of the hose reel, the, the um, drywall, then the studding that you're going through and get the proper length uh, studs for you. That's what I would do. Now these lag bolts, man, they can hold up a lot of weight, so you're not going to have any problems. I use four of those on the, on the hose reel. I use two of them here on, on the shelf, one top, one bottom. And I'll tell you what, I could jump up and down and stand on this thing, no problem whatsoever. Man, it is extremely solid. And that's my recommendation. It's always better to do it right the first time instead of having it come back and it's like, well, it's wobbly, man. I don't, you know, we don't want any of that wobbly bull crap. I want it done right the first time. All right, so let's move on and talk about installing the Krenzla now. Now the Krenzel starts with the, at the hose bib here. We got a hose bib, which is a garden hose fitting. It's an MTM quick disconnect, and it turns into, I have an adapter here, which turns the three quarter garden hose into national pipe threads. From this adapter, I go to my stainless steel three quarter uh, braided hose, which is, looks nice, man. It's a good look to it. I come down here. Now we got to get from here to a 90 degree bend. So I used a stainless steel 90 degree elbow but at, now we got to get back into the Krenza with another garden hose fitting. I mean, think about it. This thing is made to hook a garden hose to. So now we got to go with another adapter that takes it from the national pipe thread back to the garden hose fitting. Mm -hmm. 
super easy. It's a minimal amount of fittings and it, that's going to be huge because if you ever get a drip or a leak, we're not looking at 40 different fittings and who wants a big monstrosity anyway, man? I want it to be clean. Now, the length of this hose is all predicated on which, how high did you do all this, man? If, you're, if your shelf and hose bib was two feet apart, you would need a hose that made sense for that. Now, the routing I was going for was a nice sweeping 90 degree bend coming over here level and just going straight into the Krenza. And man, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So if you're going for something similar, again, I'll leave links down in the description, but just, I can't emphasize enough that if you stray off of like this general layout, you're gonna have to adjust hoses accordingly. All right, so now we get into the Krenzel. The magic happens, man. We get that 2.1 gallons of water, man. How about that? 2.1 gallons of water and, and man, set at about 1,000 PSI. This thing is nice, man. It's real nice. All right, so the magic comes out. Then we get into our um, M22 14 millimeter uh, fitting on the end of the Krenzel here. This has to be right too, guys. You know, there's, there's a couple different sizes out there and they either fit or they don't fit and it has to fit. <laughs> so now we go from there and we, uh, I have a quick disconnect that takes us to our 3 8 high pressure MTM jumper hose. You know, I've been saying it over and over again, get the measurement that makes sense for yours. Like when I laid mine out, I ran my tape around and I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a perfect fit for what I'm trying to do. I'll leave links down for, for multiple solutions, but just keep in mind, that's what you're thinking about there. Now this high pressure hose comes down and runs into the Cox hose reel. I don't see any reason for a quick disconnect here. There's no advantage to it. Quick disconnects have rubber, have rubber O-rings in them and over time they fail and tend to drip or leak or anything like that. I like to minimize those and only use them where they're gonna help me. Now I'm down into the Cox hose reel. Man, I, I, the water comes into here and we got our MTM hose, 100 foot. People been asking recently too, like do you have a quick disconnect on the inside of there? You could do it and it would stop you from having that pain in the butt of uh, getting it in there initially. But again, now we got, a, we got another O-ring hidden down inside there. And if it starts dripping, we're gonna have to pull all that out and have to mess with it. So what I did was I just pre-twisted the hose and then screwed it into the, to the hose reel. It's not hard. I mean, yeah, it looks like a little bit of a pain, but it's not. Now we have a hard, everything is hard fittings in here where we can't see it. Now we come off of our MTM down to our Mosmatic OG spec spray gun. I don't have to tell you guys again and again, this is worth the money, man. If I broke this today for some reason, I'd buy another one tomorrow. I'm just gonna leave it at that. This thing's awesome. I did a full review on it. I'll put that up there too, but I'll give you the quick rundown. Fully recessed, stainless steel fitting, uh, you know, swivel. The, the, the is on right now. And look how buttery smooth that is. Now we come out and all of it's hidden, it's nice. You come up, you have an easy pull trigger. I would pull this, but it's on. You pull it, it snaps, it holds down. It's, once you get to a certain point, it clicks and then it's almost it takes zero effort to hold it. We get out here, now we get this super nice Mosmatic tip and man, it's a 40 degree fan. It's totally protected by rubber. It's amazing. All right, now that we've talked about the full install, we got it on the wall. Everybody's here to see this thing in action, man. So I'm gonna run a few tests with you. One, we're gonna spray it on the car. I'm gonna put the foam cannon out and see how it does with the foam. Also, I wanna just run it and we'll see how loud this thing is. So let's give it all those tests and then um, we'll see you in a minute. All right. All right, so it's time to see what the actual sound levels are on the Krenzla 1322 total stop. Now we know it's gonna be pretty quiet compared to other models, I can tell you that right away. It claims 84 decibel. That's pretty quiet because right now, with the decibel meter running and me talking, we're in the 70s right now and that's, that's pretty much with just me talking. 
With me quiet, we're at about 38 decibels. Now that's with the air conditioner running, cars driving by, and just ambient noise in the garage. So I'm pretty optimistic that if this thing runs at 84, it's gonna be really quiet. Now the whole goal with quiet is, I wanna be able to run my pressure washer without upsetting everybody in the house or in your place of business or your neighbors. We just wanna be able to run it whenever we want without any problems. Now let's fire it up and let's see how loud it is with the actual uh, pressure washer running and, and pushing water out of the gun. Let's do it. Wow, with the pressure washer running, it's exactly 84. Eighty-four to eighty-five decibels. So that's about the sound of someone talking. All right, so now what I want to do is close the garage door. I got it insulated. I'm hoping this is going to be a big deal. This is my big master plan. Quiet pressure washer, insulated door equals no noise outside of the garage. So let's close the door, fire up the pressure washer, and let's take a noise reading outside of the door here. All right, so we're outside the door now, and we're reading 60 dB. That's pretty quiet, man. I mean, I can hear the actual sprayer over top of the machine, so kind of stoked on that. All right, so in terms of noise output, man, the 84 decibel was absolutely spot on. Now, when you pay this kind of money for a machine, you expect no bull crap on the numbers. You know, when you get the cheap, uh, pressure washers from overseas off of Amazon, man, you're gonna get unreliable numbers. You know, everything about them's bull crap, and, and that's okay, man, at that price point. But when I pay this amount and it says 84, I want 84. <laughs> <laughs> and we got it, it delivered. Inside the garage, it was totally sensible. It's, it's not much louder than me talking. And when I go outside the garage with the insulated door that I did, man, it's actually quiet. The sprayer was louder. I mean, I had that about 15 feet away. I could hear that way over top of the machine. So some of that noise was probably the sprayer and cars driving by and me talking, but I'll tell you what, it was super quiet. So man, the plan came together because my goal out here in my shop is to be able to run my equipment whenever I want with no limitations, man. And between the insulated door to super quiet machine, everything super well built and insulated in the wall, we're there, man, and that's, that's huge. All right, that's all I got to say about sound. If you have extra money and you wanna go all out and get the nicest stuff on the market, right here, man, Krenzla 1322 total stop. Now, people ask, why, why the 1322 total stop? I see other ones on Amazon that are, you know, actually they cost more money and I'll explain that. The 1322 is, is totally dialed in for, for what we're doing here. Um, th the pressure that it can produce is somewhere between 500 and 1400 PS. So it's kind of low pressure, high water volume. So my goal with this one is to go at 1000 PSI at 2.1 gallons per minute. Other ones can't do that. It's, it, they're down in the one point somethings. So if you want the highest spec, this is it, man, right here. Um, the other unit also, if you, if you did go with a different type of Krenza, they're going to come with a hose and a nozzle and all kinds of stuff that you're not going to want. <laughs> so you're paying for stuff that you don't need. This one is pump only. So if you're going to buy this one, you have to basically be willing to get all the stuff. Now, I'm, I got several solutions down here. I look at this like there's multiple types of people out there. There's the type of person that wants to do the DIY like I'm explaining, and they want to buy each and every individual fitting, and they want to make it work. I just want to be clear, though. These will be coming in different packages from different vendors, and um, you kind of got to have some some wherewithal and some, and, and some ability to put all this together and make it work. But for those of you that have the money and you just want to hit one button and have the whole solution show up at your house, I'll leave a link down below so that you can make the purchase and get it here. Everything will be tried and true, no working out the bugs. And, uh, and I recommend that for people that can afford it. Or also like, let's say you're going to hire a contractor and you say, Hey, just install all this. Then you're going to want a fully functioning kit. Um, but, for the adventurous people like myself, and I know a lot of you are, I'm going to have a lot, every link for everything here so that you can do it yourself, man. That's what I'm all about, saving some money and doing it yourself. So if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I love when people subscribe. If you have any questions about anything, Karcher, Active, 
Krenzla, wall mounted, any of the fittings, any of the parts, anything you want to know, leave it down in the comments down below. I'll try my hardest to answer you as quick as I can. And if you like the video, consider hitting that like button. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for today. That's my Krenzla 1322 total stop, man. What a beauty. I, I don't have anything else to say than that. Um, all right. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>